Hi Roy, welcome to March Bank Mailbag Hot Seat. <laughs> this is a weekly question and answer session with yourself which has come about because lots of people send us questions about your um, picking, about your guitars, about the way you approach music and um, really today's question falls into the last category there. Um, it's how do you compose? which is a pretty big question. So I'm hoping you will be able to talk us through the process of um, when a piece of music comes to you. And by a piece of music, I mean the kind of, all your original compositions are quite different from each other and they all involve quite a bit of orchestration. Um, and I just wondered if you could talk us through from when a piece of music comes to you to when you got it down um, on manuscript and you then have to convey all that to people that you're working with. Mm. <clears throat> well it generally arrives to me as a complete whole. All, I mean just everything. Uh, the good thing is I can actually slow it down or speed it up when it's there, formed inside my head. But I will take it apart, starting generally with the, the melody first. Um, that's the easiest place to start, I think, in anything. <coughs> that or the rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the melody definitely first. And sometimes there's four or five different melodies in any one given piece. Sometimes only one, it depends. Um, Do you need an instrument to work that out? Normally it depends how complex the melody is. If it's very simple, um, I'll generally just write it down in manuscript. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect relative pitch is good for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, it depends how complex the, the melody is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, from there to orchestrating it, to working out how I would like the backing, I prefer to use opening alter tunings. Okay. Um, alter tunings that I don't know. Uh huh. Um, meaning um, I do know. Obviously, Drop D or Dad Gad, I'm very familiar with because I've had years of playing them mm -hmm. and various different uh, sessions. But I prefer to escape into the realms of uh, strange alternate tunings that I'm not familiar when I'm trying to find a, a new kind of backing for a melody. Sometimes I will use Dad Gad because it's that it fits. With inspiration? Yeah. 9 out of 10 times, but it's more to do with the the kind of sound that I'm hearing inside my head. Right, so it's to get at the sound. Mm. Mm. So can you show me the difference between the sound of a chord in standard tuning and the mm. sound of a chord in an open tuning and maybe we can understand it better that way? Okay, well, I'll just take a um, humble D in standard tuning. Okay. Nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be particularly inspired by okay. that kind of sound. So by tuning to Dad Gad, uh, you obviously you get a big, rich, open sound, a major. Lost. Yeah, I can hear the difference in the sounds there. Easily. One's, yeah, much more rich. <clears throat> mm. It's it's easier to lose yourself in something where you don't have to think too much about what you've learnt. Mm -hmm. um, even in Dad Guard, I'm limited to my core vocabulary in, in Dad Guard, so I'm still uh, it's still uncharted waters. Yeah. In yeah. some areas. It's a good way to push yourself. Mm. So to find. Um, an open tuning that you've not used before mm. and then have to sort of fumble and find your way around. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how that would work. Yeah. So where from there? Uh, once I've got basically the kernel mm -hmm. of what it is that I'm wanting to say, 
or what I hear inside my mind, I've then got the um, the the difficulty of going back to standard tuning. I've got to try and transpose everything that I've come up with in opening altered tunings, mm -hmm. bring it back to standard, and understand exactly what it is that I've done. Mm -hmm. So once I have all that written out, the chords, for example, the melody is usually dead simple, like I explained. Uh, the chords behind the melody, once I know what the chords are, mm -hmm. like it might be a, a D9, but I'm not aware it's a D9 when I'm in an alter tuning. But okay. uh, I can tell kind of by year it's a D9, but I'm not sure of the uh -huh. you know, the complexities that are, of other things that are going on. Um, once I know exactly what's happening, I can then give that information to anybody else that's wanting to play in the So that's really the why you put it back into standard tuning because it's then easier to convey to everybody else what's going on. To communicate with other musicians that you're working with. Right. Okay. They have to know what's happened. Mm -hmm. If uh, someone asks you to write out a chord chart for a piece of music um, and you're like, well, I don't really know what the, the chords are. Because I had it in some wacky open tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I probably find the, the, you know, the answer will be, well, no, I'm not really interested in working with you much so much, but sure I'll find someone else. Um, but the point is that when you are composing, anybody can do it in any way they want. Of and course. if you want to put yourself through all that kind of, um, not necessarily angst, but throwing yourself into new territory, mm. I suppose after you know, 40 odd years of playing now, you're looking to keep it fresh. Yeah, well, it's, it's if you throw yourself into the chaos, you can organise the chaos. Uh huh. A bit like I do with the kids. A bit like you always do with the kids, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you're doing right now. So when you're up in your studio and it's taking hours and hours and hours and hours to do things, you're not actually playing Call of Duty. Uh, no, of course not. Okay, right, okay. I don't know if I believe you, but uh -huh. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that anyway, Roy. <laughs>